What happens when fruit leather goes bad? Hi folks, it's Darcy from ThePurposefulPantry.com and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about what happens when fruit leather goes bad. Uh, if you have dried your fruit leather too long and it's no longer pliable and cannot roll and you can't use it and it doesn't taste good or at least the texture doesn't taste good, do not throw it away. I've got some tips for you right now about how to save fruit leather that you may have dried too long. So what got this started was um, last week I did the pumpkin waffles, how to make pumpkin waffles and pumpkin in a quick pumpkin butter that I'm going to link up to in the iCards uh, and down in the description box below. You can get it there. Um, and then I had leftover pumpkin, which I have always have many cans of this that about once a year I dehydrate it in order to have enough pumpkin powder to last me through the year to use all the ways that I want to use it. Uh, and I don't have a video on Oh yeah, I do. Uh, I did the fresh pumpkin. It works just the same as canned by the time you cook the pumpkin and then get the puree. From there on, it's just the same as with can. And I will link it in the iCards and the description box below, just like always. Uh, and then I have a specific post on doing just the puree on the blog. So what I did is I wanted to go ahead and do this leather and that way I could show you the process and how to do it from the can instead of fresh. But when I was doing it, I thought, you know what? No, we're gonna make this an experiment and do a couple of things so that I can walk you through the process of how to save fruit leather when it goes bad. So, and I don't mean bad as in not good to eat, but it didn't come out the way you'd hoped when you were drying it. So, what I used was, I, I had my cassori, so I was just using it. So I used a regular Teflon uh, coated fruit leather sheet. Okay, they look just like this. They look just like this. Okay, that's usually what I use for fruit leathers and to keep things from sticking on trays that might. Um, this brand is a homey brand, um, and, and, it, and it, it works just fine, okay? And then what I thought, I'd go ahead, I don't like to use par parchment paper at all for dehydrating, especially for fruit leathers. It's just not a medium I like working with. But I wanted to do it especially for fruit leathers so that you could see what happens when something is really watery and you let it go a little too long. This was too thin. This is what happens. As parchment paper, and it may not be every brand of parchment paper in the world, but everyone I've had and worked with, while parchment paper is a non-stick uh, medium to use for cooking and for dehydrating, over time it still can absorb water if the thing that you're putting on it is really watery. So that's what happened with this. The puree that came out of the cans was a little wet, and as I'm drying, as it's laying there on the parchment to dry, this happened long before I did it for too long. And the, the reason why it looks like this is I did it for a really long time for a reason. But I noticed really soon into the drying process that my parchment paper started wrinkling a little bit. And it's because it shrinks up as it gets wet and then dries, it starts shrinking up, which is something that can also happen if you use saran wrap uh, to wrap your tray with. And then to put um, fruit leather on, that saran wrap can shrink up a little bit and then cause your fruit leather not to look good and all those kind of things, which is why it's not recommended. So what I have here is a fruit leather that's too dry to make fruit leather. So uh, sometimes when you get this, you have trouble getting the fruit leather off of your sheet. And I wanted to go through a couple of ways to have that happen. But then I also wanted to talk about what do you do with this when, you're, when, when this happens to you. So first, if you have fruit leather that is stuck to your tray and to your sheets and you cannot get it off, there are a couple things you can do. You, can, If you have room, stick this in your freezer and it will help make the uh, the leather kind of shrink up a little bit and, you'll, and it will start separating from your fruit leather sheet. Now, if you have it this bad, I don't know that that's gonna work. Um, the next thing that you do is when you're working with any of these sheets, you're not gonna be able to save this for leather. Okay, this is not gonna turn back into leather no matter what you do. You can save an overdone leather, and I'll tell you that in just a second, but when they get too far gone, you're gonna to have to do some other things with it. But if you wanna to try to get it off, something that I always recommend is instead of trying to take the fruit leather and pull it off of your sheet, which what often will happen is that your fruit leather starts breaking. Start pulling the sheet away from your fruit leather because what you're doing is you're putting the pressure on a different spot. So the pressure is going on the paper to peel away from it rather than making pulling this and having it start cracking. You see how that's working? Not saying it's not going to break, but instead of yanking this and putting all the pressure here, 
you're putting the pressure on the paper. Something else you can do, if you have a sheet that you're not able to get the leather off very well, you can take something that has a really thin um, edge. You don't want like a thick spatula, you can get a really thin one, or a, an offset icing um, spatula, or like this is like a little butter knife. You can get in it under here and start using it to separate out, and that can help too for something that you might have sticking. All right, let's move these because we're gonna work with that. So let's say that you have this fruit leather and you wanna know what to do with it. Some really good basic ideas and uh, to use this in other ways than just fruit leather. You can powder it and you, you go straight back to a powder. That's my number one way to use it anyway. But once you get all these pieces broken and taken off, they will powder really well because it's over dry. Another way to use this is just to go ahead and break up the shards and eat them just like this, okay? This is still fruit leather, it's just a little sharper, it doesn't stick to your teeth as much. Um, and if that's an issue for you, if you know, you know. And so this works just like fruit leather, it's just, it's just hard instead of really super soft. You can use this to put an ice cream as decoration. You can use this to use as a chip for any kind of fruit dip, if you'd like. Oh, um, crumble this up in your oatmeal. Like, so if you just do it like this, you're gonna have crumbles. Okay, you don't have to necessarily use a, uh, any kind of grinder to get there, but you can have these little shards that you can put inside your oatmeal and while the oatmeal cooks, this will rehydrate. It adds that fruit back into your oatmeal. You can sprinkle this on top of ice cream or on top of your oatmeal to make it pretty. You can do those kind of things. Okay, something else that you can do with this, and I wish I had thought to go ahead and do that so that you could see the difference. You can also allow your fruit leather to just sit on your tray in your machine because you want to keep it covered so that you don't have debris from around the room on it or you can cover it with something to um, just put another piece of parchment paper on it or something and just allow it to sit and absorb the moisture that's in your home or if you have some you know if you're canning you can put it over near your canner because it's going to absorb more moisture that way or uh, any of those kind of things um, and if you live in a really humid environment this is a good way to kind of recoup what you did um, just allow it to sit and reabsorb moisture. It's going to get a little more pliable when you do that. Um, and you may be able to save it and make the leather out of it again. Something else you can do is put this back in water uh, and allow it to reabsorb water and become a puree again. Now, yes, it's gonna be a little watery and you can, you can simmer it down and try to get the water out again to make it just a puree. And you can go back and just use that in any other way that you might've used it before, but it's a way to make it like maybe uh, if you had added applesauce to this already, so these are just pure pumpkin right here, okay? But if you had added applesauce to this to make it a leather to eat and snack on, and you found that you overdid it, it wasn't leather anymore, it was still shards, but you want to still be able to use it, just put it back in some water, let it rehydrate, simmer it for a while to get rid of some of the excess water, and then you can use it like a fruit spread to put on anything that you would typically do that with toast and muffins and all those kind of things. So you can reuse it that way if you want. Um, so there are lots of ways that you can do this to, to kind of get a new life. But honestly, the best one for me is to powder this because then you're just back to the powder you were trying to go for in the beginning. And when I'm trying to dry pure purees for powder in the end, this is how I do it. I dry it until it's really dry. That way it's good and solid. And then I can make a powder out of it. So I do have this piece of fruit leather now that these were all dried exactly the same. This one although has the applesauce in it, but they were dried the same time, the same temperature and everything in the same, in the same process. So I do have this fruit leather that I can put on a piece of uh, another clean piece of parchment or I can put on some plastic wrap. I can roll it however tightly you would like to roll it. You can store it like this. You can put it on your parchment paper and then cut it down here to have strips that you can roll the individual strips that are already uh, packaged. And you can do all sorts of things. All right, a tip I forgot when we were talking earlier, I'm gonna add in here. Before I go to talk about uh, some ideas that my my uh, my dehydrating club members uh, have, I have found over time, for me, 
because it works best for me, not for everybody. You can do what you need to do, work with what you got. Uh, and if you have the option, then I would do it. It also depends on the kind of dehydrator you have. These may not be available to all of you, but I have found that thicker uh, fruit leather sheets work much better than parchment. So this is just a generic brand of Teflon um, fruit leather sheets that you can cut. Okay, it's Teflon, it's not, it doesn't have fiberglass on the inside of it. So you can cut these to whatever size tray you have. And even if you have one that's wider than this, like the uh, the Sahara dehydrator that I use, uh, its trays are wider and I can just like put two of these together to make it work. So if I had to, I could do that. Um, but I find that this is the best uh, generic thing that you can get for any dehydrator and you can cut these. And um, I think I've showed it in the past how I do these when I first got my Kasori. Um, I cut some of these 14 by 14 sheets down to fit it specifically since Kasori doesn't make these kind of sheets. Um, but you can do this for your round dehydrator too. All you have to do is just, you know, trace one, uh, cut it out, and you can have this kind of fruit leather sheet for your round dehydrators and not have to use those hard plastic ones that I really, really don't like using. And over time, those silicone ones from Bright Kitchen, the green ones that a lot of, uh, that are available to a lot of people, I know in the beginning I had it and I thought they were great because I hadn't used something like that before and it solved a problem for me and I thought they were wonderful. But with doing fruit livers, um, over time, I just really don't like them because stuff sticks to them and I can't clean them well because of our water. And I know it's just an issue of it shouldn't matter, but I don't like all the spots and all the stuff on it because it just feels dirty to me all the time. So while they're great, and I know a lot of people love them, they also work as well. And I, uh, I'll, I'll put a picture of one here. Um, it's just pure silicone. So you can cut it to come up to any size tray that you need and it won't have the lip any, no, they have some plastic sheets that aren't the 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 silicone. Um, but it is a kind of silicone that you can cut if you need to, but it just won't keep the shape. It will kind of roll. It could do that because it's not gonna have any shape built into it to stay flat, the way that the lip trays do. And lip trays can really help those of you who need the help because it keeps everything the same depth, the same thickness. They really can be helpful. I just personally don't like them the best, okay? That's just me. All right, the other thing that you have, if you have an Excalibur, um, you have these sheets that they have. These are really expensive, but they're really super thick. And I love this for making leathers because they don't absorb anything and they come apart so easily. They just pry right off. And my favorite ones for them are these, the Excalibur sheets. I like these better than the Homey, I meant these generic ones, because they too will just, slide everything just slides right off on them but again i know that these are not an option for all of you they're also uh, not cheap um but i buy them and use them um you cannot cut uh i don't remember if you can buy these and cut this one down i think that it cannot be done i'm pretty sure these cannot be cut and these cannot but if there's teflon on the I mean, there's fiberglass on the inside of some of these that help them stay rigid um, oh, and, and oh, you can buy like the oven liner sheets that you would use, like you can use Silpat sheets or you can use the oven liner sheets um, that are uh, silicone or Teflon. Those work just as well. But the thing is, is they have, they have fiberglass embedded into them. You cannot cut them because that fiberglass will come out and it will get into your food and it's not a safe thing. You don't want to do that at all. So I hope those tips help. Stay tuned for some ideas for my community. Hey, it's post post video Darcy during the editing stage that while I was working on this for the video, um, I thought, you know what? I also have, because fruit leathers are not my thing. I am not a fruit leather expert. I do them sometimes. Uh, I know how to do them, but I don't like them. My family doesn't really like them. And we tend to do this for powder more than we do anything else. So I'm not a big fruit leather expert the way I am with some other things with dehydrating. So what I thought I'd do is go to my community, Dehydrating Tips and Tricks, and ask them, like, what else do you do to save fruit leather that's kind of gone bad? So uh, some other ideas were to crumple this up in those same chards that I mentioned earlier about sprinkling on top of your ice cream. But then she did this and I thought, oh, that's genius. If you're making ice cream sandwiches, or even if you buy ice cream sandwiches from the store, you can let them sit out for a little while and get soft, or while you're still making them and they're soft. Crumple this up and then roll your ice cream sandwich so that the, the little shards of this go around the edge of it. And it makes it a really nice decoration. The same way that you might do uh, like mini chocolate chips. So that, I thought that was a brilliant idea. Or uh, use this to, um, like I did say decorating with it. Oh, somebody mentioned also taking the shards and dipping them in some chocolate because chocolate makes everything better no matter how bad it got. So I just wanted to add a couple of things in there in case those help you as well. Um, 
and I just wanted to say that I pulled this out because this is the uh, Teflon sheet that I was using uh, for drying other than just parchment. And this was the non, uh, non leather apples, the non applesauce leather sheet. This is just plain puree of pumpkin puree. And even as dry and hard as it's gotten, it does come off much easier than on that parchment paper because the parchment paper just sucked up that water and everything shrank and made it hard to pull off. Um, so while this does not make a good leather, like it doesn't, you know, it's still gonna crack, it's not gonna bend, um, but this comes across, this comes apart easier as well. So the shards that I'm getting from this when I break it up aren't as hard and as, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Let me get one. I'm back. This is hard, crisp, sharp, uh, like this, but this piece is not quite so much. It's, it's not leather, but it's closer because it just dried differently than the parchment because the parchment paper just sucked up some of the water. So I hope these tips have given you some help on some ways that you can save your fruit leather. Um, I, I really, this is one of those things that is hard for a lot of people, especially when they first get started because fruit leathers are supposed to be so easy, but sometimes it is hard and it takes you a little while to get the hang of it. Um, so if you have questions about how to handle fruit leather, so if you have suggestions about how you reuse fruit leather that's gone bad, uh, that you've dried too long, leave the comments down below to let everybody else learn how they use theirs. So fruit leather can't go bad no matter what you do with it. So if you want to learn how to powder pumpkin, I'm going to put that link right here. And if you want to learn how to use that powder in waffles, I'll put that link right here. And until I'll see you next time, happy dehydrating.